Be me. Half elf fighter. Be not me. Seven other people and the DM. Taking a break from adventuring in a city bustling with guild activity. Notice my coin purse is gone. Bring it up to the guards. The guards say it was probably the thieves guild so they're powerless. What? Duck if. Guards explain the thieves guild pay their taxes so they can legally operate in the city. Bring up three different points on how that's bullshit. Sarcastically ask if the assassins have a guild too. They do, and as long as they leave a bit of tax money on the corpse, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> Start in and out of character rant about how this is bureaucratic bullshit and makes no fucking sense. Next day, having lunch at the inn. Fall asleep. Wake up in the middle of torture. My body is discovered in the evening with a bit of tax money on me. My face when the thieves guild hired the assassins guild to kill me. My face when bureaucracy killed me. <laughs> It oh, doesn't. Be honest, with you, be honest with you, that doesn't sound uh, too far from fantasy. No. To a certain doesn't. extent. No. So, logically speaking, a warlock should be trying to hide the fact they sold their soul to some powerful being from the rest of the party, right? Well, that would make logical sense. It would make it logical would sense. It would make, however, I don't think that's ever happened. No. <laughs> ever. Hell no. My warlock banged the fairy queen for magic and he will flaunt that shit. Fucking multi class and bard. <laughs> Do you know how mediocre, regular, vanilla, no frills warlocks are in 4th edition or 5th edition? Are you implying any patron option is a good thing to be associated with? If anything, I would argue Fae and Outer Gods are worse than demons. Yeah, honestly, you can't trust yeah, the Fae. Say, yeah. Like, Fae are pretty nasty. Yeah, they are. Like, you know, that. Yeah, let's not get into no. how, how nasty the <laughs> Fae are. But yeah, selling your soul, eh. If you get something good out of it in the end, does it really matter? <laughs> yeah, I suppose that's true. Also, if any of you guys are interested, we do have the Simp Warlock subclass available on the website. Oh yeah, go check it out. <laughs> if any of you guys want to check it out, you know that's a thing, just saying. Let me tell you a tale of glory and woe. Be me. DM is running a high-level one-shot to supplement our main campaign. Playing an invasion force striking against the Dark Lord to help distract him from the main party. Make a high-level Aarakocra Barbarian. Also present, Cleric, Monk, Druid and some homebrew class. First mission. Take out the magic ballista tower that's been taking out the rock's flying trips. A rock immediately gets shot down by a bolt trailing a barbed net. I jumped off the rock as soon as we were above the tower. Rest of the party approaches from the crash site. With an eagle's screech, I rage and dive bomb the tower full of gnolls. Knock one right off the roof, feeling pretty good turn around. Ballista is pointing right at me. Pick related. <laughs> <laughs> Take a siege weapon directly to the face. Get netted and restrained. Get dogpiled by gnolls. Furry's dream. <laughs> Getting dogpiled <laughs> by gnolls. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Where do gnolls fit on the furry hierarchy? Uh, you know what? I've never thought of it before, James. <laughs> yeah, let's just forget about that. No. Let's just keep. Let's just. Keep and if you're a furry, don't comment in my please, comment please, section. Please don't tell us. Don't comment we don't, we in actually, my comment yeah, better section. Off, don't, don't, we don't want to know. My rage cuts their weapon damage in half. Doesn't do shit for the poison on their weapons. Lost nine tenths of my health in a single turn. Try to break free. Roll shit even with advantage. Beg DM for just five foot of movement. Managed to roll off the tar ledge away from the knolls. Can't fly. Rest of the party arrives just in time to see my body hit the ground. Aww. Oh. That pretty cool death, though. It is cool death. That, that, that was a pretty good. Uh, that was a pretty good scene. Not I, I, getting I, raped by knolls. <laughs> no magic. No monsters. Humans only. Is there anything more boring? How can anyone have fun with something so dull? Well, you're wrong, and you should feel bad. <laughs> Human supremacy. <laughs> Fantasy, the lamest shit out there. Historical recreation and real events told through a narrative are the only media that really matters. You don't learn anything from fiction. Guess I should have thrown all my writings <laughs> away then. <laughs> no, Tolkien, don't hurt no. me like that. <laughs> Not, you. Not you. Make friends with lost tribe of gnolls. Offer them halfling corpses peace offering. Entire dialogue is broken English and beast noises. End up joining in on a large feast of charred meat where our halfling bard almost had to commit cannibalism for relations. Good sesh. 
Look, sometimes you just gotta do it. Look, if a party like, doesn't end in cannibalism, uh, is it worth even so, going to? Like, you know, it, it, like, guys, it just happens from time to time. But, you know, like, he didn't have to go for it. Could he not have just, like, shiv- like you know, just pretend he didn't, like, you know, flicked it behind like, his head? Like, do dog? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, like, throw it under his chair or something, you know what I mean? Uh, I, I think you could get away with it. Give me, give me a few, uh, good sleight of hand goals, and I think you could get <laughs> yeah. away with that. That would work. Maybe add in a bit of deception. Aeroplane noises. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rogue has a freak out because of a nightmare. Sorcerer, in attempt to calm him down, restrains the rogue and then uses shape water to form a cube around the rogue's head. Wait, what? Is he trying to waterboard him? It, it sounds like it. When asked why he was doing this, he responded that his plan was to drown the kobold in the exhaustion so that he could be calmed down safely. Yeah, he's waterboarding him. Uh, that's that's, <laughs> that's that. Okay, guys, you know what? I think I think we found a new method for using control water. Yeah. Control water is now. Yeah, actually, I'm using that. <laughs> I'm, fuck yeah, I'm. Yeah, we're doing that next time. Hey guys, do you like models in your tabletop role playing games? Cause we do too. Do you like having big bitty wifeys on your table? Cause we do too. <laughs> <laughs> we got human bitties. We got lizard bitties. We got orc bitties. Oni bitties. Cat bussies. We've got everything you want at neckbeardia.co.uk. <laughs> Check the links down below. It helps us out a lot. Sorry for interrupting the video. Let's get on the story. DM lets me get a magic item for my fighter. It's overpowered as fuck and we breeze through encounters because of me. Having fun being OP. DM starts getting antsy. Won't stop glaring at the party. He tries to railroad me into losing the magic weapon. Apparently thinks it was a mistake to give it this early. Refuses to give the item up. He reaches over and grabs my piece of the battle map and starts skitzing out, talking about how he's just going to kill my character then. The party just shrugs and says I should let him take the weapon away if it was a mistake. I give up the item, but later I took a shit in the water tank of his toilet. Oh <laughs> my god! Am I in the right? Why don't more DMs actually balance their games before? Or just let me be OP and have fun? Choose one! I took a shit in the water tank of his toilet. I haven't heard of anyone doing that in a while. That's pretty base. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, like, I have I no. Don't know I, what to I, say. I, I'm sorry, guys. I have, I have genuinely no words. Um, please, please don't take a shit in the water tank of your DM's Toilets, toilet. Toilets, please. Um, don't. Just, PSA. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't feel like I should have to say that, but uh, apparently but, we do. <laughs> please don't do that to people. Like, you know, that's. Uh, that's pretty nasty, I have to be honest with you. Fighting some vampire big bad evil guy. No, not Strad. It was a homebrew campaign. He's conducting some ritual to do something evil, probably. I can't remember. I'm going to guess he's doing something evil. Yeah. <laughs> Just, you know, wild guess. <laughs> like, it's, like, it's pretty evil. Don't worry, we can, we can fuck his day up and not feel bad about it. <laughs> There's some kind of beam shining from the moon right onto him. Be me. Human rogue. Remember that I found some magical mirror a few sessions ago. Decide to try using it to redirect moon laser. It's working. Decide to direct the laser at the moon. Mirror shatters. Laser hits me in the face. Fall to zero HP. End up looking like pick related. What did I even think I was going to do here? Blow up the fucking moon? <laughs> well, there, I, 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 th I think his logic... Give everything a go. I think it sounded like it was... Yeah. I, thought, I thought it sounded like a good idea. Yeah, it was shined in... Is that here or something? Yeah, like, you know, well, how, how good could, well, oh, I'm thinking here for a magic item, maybe the magic laser pointer, you know, you can oh, give yeah. people d disadvantage when you shine people in the eyes, <laughs> <laughs> or is it, or is it going to be a magic spell that you can do the same with? Oh, I, don't, oh, I can already imagine people like, oh, just use prestidigitation, <laughs> prestidigitation <laughs> doesn't do everything, guys, okay? <laughs> It doesn't do everything. However, I recently came across a really good new way to use prestidigitation, and it's for making shitty subtitles. So, where one of our games we had like it was a bit of a Japanese themed like a yakuza sort of setup. So it was doing like you know local gang and all that jazz. Anyway, anyway, what we really should have been doing is like you know having like a really shitty like you know like think like dubbed over dubbed over like a seventies kung fu film. Like the but, mouth moves like four seconds behind. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but but in front everything is prestigiation, like really broken shitty English. You know, <laughs> it, it was pretty funny. I really enjoyed it. That's probably the best use I've had no, prestigiation in a while. You know, 
even though procrastination may as well just be the answer to all of life's problems. Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> the inscribed tablet with unknown glyphs the players have been carrying for months has finally been deciphered. It's the ancient equivalent of a lolcat. Oh god. <laughs> well, like, let's be serious. Like, you know, Egyptians, they did love their cats now. Do you reckon they had lol cats? Yeah. Lots of love cat. Do you get it? No, what the fuck? Oh, well, lots of love. <laughs> All right, okay, please, just please, leave me alone. Please, uh, <laughs> no. Just keep I think going. I'm funny, okay? Right. Um, yeah, let's just keep going. <laughs> One player rolls a perception check, finds a symbol at the bottom of the tablet. Symbol seems to have been placed there far after the tablet's creation. Players notice it is a symbol of an ancient guild of art thieves known as the Gang of Nine. Oh, oh, God. Oh, oh, God. The players soon realise that this symbol makes the tablet worthless. <laughs> <laughs> no. I like that. Do you not remember? Sure, there was a big thing where Nine Gag actually made that. Um, they, they made like a big monolith. Yeah. So they did remember that was like about a good few years back. But yeah, nine gags cringe, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, just, 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 just stop it. <laughs> First time playing D and D. Friend mentioned that their group has a hard time getting new people. Mm, red flag. Agree to join them. Go to DM's apartment to play. Everyone has one of those wooden TV trays to roll on. For some reason, DM doesn't trust anyone's roll. Another red flag. Uh. Constantly walks around and checks the dice to make sure people aren't lying. Big red flag. Uh. <laughs> what? Keeps telling people that one of their dice is cocked and needs to be re-rolled. Usually only the good rolls that need to be re-rolled. Cheating bastard. Uh. Cheating bastard. <laughs> I get my first natural 20 attack and I'm excited. DM walks over to check. Accidentally bumps, well accidentally, uh. bumps the tray causing the dice to roll. Sorry and on, I didn't see it so it doesn't count. Just use whatever it ended up on. It ended up being a 12. How disappointing. <laughs> I know, that's just... No. Stop caring about the game and just autopilot until session is over. Never come back. Friend asks why and doesn't see the problem. Kills any interest I had in trying D&D again for years. Honest to God, psychopathy. I always wonder what's wrong with these people. Like, what, what is it that happened in the past that makes him so... <laughs> why do you like this? <laughs> yeah, why, why... Why are you like this? <laughs> yeah. Right, but what is it though? There has to have been something. There has that... to be some like childhood trauma or something that's making you so much of a dick. Uh, like that seems a bit like. I feel bad. That this person was put off D and D. I know it's a little shame, but like you know, like a bad experience can tarn, tarn it can. can tarnish it anything. Can. You know, and it is like, like when it comes to tabletop games, it really is who you play playing with, whether or yeah. not it's fun or not. Yeah. If you're playing with a pack of dickheads, it's like, oh yeah. my god, please get me the fuck out of here. I couldn't imagine of anything worse yeah but like you know if you play with people you actually enjoy you know have like, you had any bad experiences to the point where you were like I'm never playing this again yeah. it doesn't have to be D&D &D, like any anything like 40k yeah Age of Sigmar even even though yeah. it's kind of crazy. anything um, where you're playing no because of the the group that you were in you were like nope no. never doing it again everyone he ever plays this is a dickhead Dead. I'm not doing this let us know down below <laughs> yeah red flags thread so I had one recently that I feel is worth sharing as a background, I automatically reject anything political in my games as to not cause conflict for any of my players. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah. It's very, it's very hard to do that, though, I know. a lot of the time. And people just do that in for the I sake know. of, you know, and it can be. Ugh. So I was setting up a game on Discord for last Saturday because fuck Roll20. I was taking applications for players and the people in my Discord. I had one guy who was very, very interested. We ended up chatting for a bit, talking about prior games, preferred classes, etc. Finally ask him about his character. He says he wants to play a human barbarian. I ask for the character background. He starts off with, So remember the cool guy who was stormed the Capitol building dressed as a Viking? <laughs> Pick for reference. Look, I'll be, I, I, I would actually be okay with that. You I would know, be okay that, with that. That, that, was, that, was a, that was a meme worthy moment. Yeah. I immediately tell him I'm not comfortable with his character. He asks why. I told him it was too divisive. He then asks if I had a problem with Republicans. I told him, no, I don't want to turn my Discord into a park egg of political conflict. He didn't understand and started ranting about how the media are painting patriots as violent criminals. I ended up disconnecting and removing him from Discord. 
honestly probably the best option probably the best right, option I'm not going to yeah. talk about Pol- politics I'm not, not going to talk like about anything that happened to Capitol Hill all that jazz um, I can definitely understand why he was like you know what no I'm, I'm not doing this it's yeah. just going to be a mess you know and I really don't want to get into all this yeah. with people and like you know I, it, it does become a thing like I've noticed specifically in the past like maybe five to six years it feels like you know it's getting harder and harder to disassociate politics with day-to-day life oh, and it's actually yeah. at the point where it's almost completely intertwined yeah and i really try to avoid talking about it on this channel because like you know this is not what this, we're, isn't the, 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 this, this is not what we're doing here no you know but yeah no i definitely get it but the viking guy was kind of funny though it yeah. was don't, they, and don't tell don't me that some of the pictures that came out of it weren't would, funny they, they were kind of funny you know what i mean some so, of them were <laughs> I, I enjoyed it from uh, from a filthy Euro part looking in America. It was kind of funny, <laughs> yeah. but I'm not going to get into any politics. No. I can I can just say it was. I enjoyed it for <laughs> its comic value, but I cannot say whether or no. not they're. Like, it was like not. watching a bad episode of The Purge. Yeah, it was actually. It was That's pretty, what it was like. Yeah, but like. Don't hold us to anything. We're not American. We don't know shit about American politics. Sorry, guys. Look, let's just end it here, will we? <laughs> yeah. We're babbling on enough. So go and check out all the links. Go to the website. Check out the cool models with big biddies. Hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we post. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.